So, uh, this is somebody who clearly doesn't know how to use an axe. The thumbnail here is, uh, what drew me to this movie. I want to know when and where evil lurks, don't you? Where wickedness loiters? How about just calling it sometimes bad shit happens? Thank you to the country of Argentina for apparently bankrolling the whole film. ¿Qué es nuestro campo eso? No, no están cazando. Es un rifle. Es un revólver. That guy knows a lot about guns. I'm not sure if I saw people shooting on my land. My first instinct would be, well, I better get a gun and go out there. Somebody's shooting out there, I better go out there with my gun. See what I can do about the situation. That's not going to be my first thought. This guy's grizzled as fuck, though. I kind of like him already. He's barely said anything. I wonder if this is like in present day or... It looks like it could be at some point in the 70s or the 80s. It's an old-ass truck. Oh, wow, what a nice shot. I like the opening theme. That's real nice. Reverb guitar play in there. I like that guy's awful hat. Dog's like, fuck that. You guys are stupid. I'm going back to the house where my bed. Well, how did he get. I thought the dog abandoned them, damn it. Neat. You know what? Those dogs are showing a, a lot of self control, not just walking up to those guts and start uh, gnawing on them. You ever seen those funny videos where the dog, they make the dog balance the piece of food on its nose before it can eat it? That stuff always annoys me. It's like that. Because you know those dogs want to dig into them guts. Oh, see? There you go. Casimo. Asshole. It's going to go to waste. What the hell is that? A pirate spyglass? <laughs> Was he going to a steampunk convention? These guys are... They're, they're a little too nonchalant for coming across half a body on their land. Because, like, with the brother, I got the impression that this dude has, like, seen some shit before. But now I'm thinking they, they both maybe are pretty... They're pretty familiar with uh, death, if they can come, a come upon a corpse like that. If they can come upon a corpse. Well, I mean, that's going to be hard for him to do now. Because he's in at least two pieces. God damn. vamos a poderle curar. <laughs> oh. Wow, okay, so that kind of response. I'm almost wondering if this is some kind of, like, post-apocalyptic situation that they're living in. Like, he got so angry at her talking about, you know, faith healing in the church that it sounds like it's something that, like, that's long gone and we can't rely on that stuff anymore. I don't know. I, I might be extra... I am extrapolating a lot, but... Oh, he had the pea soup. <laughs> These are just two dudes who live on a farm, right? But they're acting like detectives or something. He looked like a bursting hot pocket. So this is a known curse or infection or both, right? I mean, they're talking about it like it's a thing that they've all known about it. Like, this is like some kind of problem that has been afflicting humanity for some time, at least. Rampant, world-ending, demonic possession that turns people into giant pus balls. Interesting. So, zombie virus too on top of it. It felt like, it weirdly had like a zombie type of vibe to it. He's just gonna go there and pop the blister himself, huh? Don't, put down a tarp first. Oh, 
Yeah, really, hurry up. Great shot. He didn't do it. Everybody's so intense in this shit. You might have to take out a wall. Ugh, dude. It's like his balls had diarrhea. Oh, I thought he was just gonna split open completely. <laughs> <laughs> like, you could put wacky, old-timey piano music behind this. Maybe leave him outside to dry for a while first. Ooh, that guy's a jerk. No way. Can you imagine how heavy that guy must have been? <laughs> Can't you just, like, find a cleaner? and take him. Feels like they're doing that in front of a green screen. Like it looks like they're all... <laughs> oh no! Oh, comes with his own hot mustard. Okay, so I guess they're just like, eh, fuck it, it's not our problem anymore. Gross. I don't have to burn my beret, do I? It's my favorite bullet. I've been saving you up for my birthday. Here's a question, though. If whatever the big puss bag man had is so contagious, why didn't his brother or I guess his mom? You would think, like, their whole house will, will have to be, like, sandblasted. Did they touch his skin at all when removing him? I mean, it didn't look like it. But the mother definitely did, though. You know, she was... Cleaning away his pus. Anytime he started to leak pea soup, she was right there to grab it with her old dish rag. Oh! So those are like steampunk exorcist tools of some sort. Well, I'm gonna go have a demon baby. Or take a big shit. I don't know. They both feel very similar. Stop pointing at me! You just look like a goat! You just look like any other goat! Is she gonna hit him with the axe? I think she's gonna do it, just to stop him from shooting the goat. <laughs> Tries to perform an ex exorcism by himself. He just starts berating it. Would you come on out of that goat, pussy? Oh! <laughs> do it, bitch. Hmm. That was a really good effect. Because especially when the goat has fallen over and going into convulsions makes me wonder, did they fucking kill a goat for this movie? I'm going to do a quick internet search, pardon me. It's got to be an effect, right? We spoke with When Evil Lurks director Damien Rugna about pushing boundaries in horror, the trouble with working with goats, and more. All right. So, working with goats. Not killing a goat. Him getting hit in the head with an axe looked faker than the gunshot to the goat's face. <sighs> Bitch. <laughs> Damn, she should have got one more in. That dude is always smoking, man. Half of his dinner was probably just made up of cigarettes, eating him like a salad. It doesn't feel like a winter day. <laughs> it looks muggy as hell, honestly. Interesting. I kind of just assumed towns weren't a thing anymore. Maybe this isn't as post-apocalyptic as I originally thought. It's hooch! <laughs> the dog's gonna get possessed immediately. I see you have pants on now, Dad. 
So is it just a thing that like people who are living in town still don't take it as seriously? Because they were talking the way they were talking about it and how severe and urgent they made it seem at the beginning of the movie was that, you know, this is a thing everybody knows. We have to get rid of this rotten or it's going to fuck everything up. Right. They're still arguing, though, that. Like, you would think of it that it was that big of a deal as soon as he explained the situation. Or maybe they think he's lying or something. Yeah, maybe. Because, I mean, he had a restraining order against him, right? It's like I'm watching Telemundo. <laughs> Why did he make the MGM lion sound? <laughs> Stop staring at me! <laughs> Can you hear the little girl? It sounds like she's screaming from inside, like the dog swallowed her like a whale. <laughs> oh, what? You couldn't hear the lion roaring? And the. <laughs> you didn't hear any of that? <laughs> God, the soundtrack is great! Listen to that damn cello. She's in the dog's mouth, you saw! <laughs> Awful. Walter Jr., calm down! Just wrap him up with saran wrap. That's what you should have did to the blister man to begin with. Keep all of his juices sealed inside, you know what I'm saying? Are the cops just completely oblivious to the demon infection? Maybe the dog... Maybe the dog... Oh. I was hoping for a second that maybe the dog demon disarmed the guy <laughs> and shot him. I'll accept anything from this movie at this point. That girl's gotta be missing her face or something. Come on. She's fine? No way, dude. A dog like that would would crush her skull. You might as well be attacked by a lion. Un helado de manzana, Santi. Vamos a tomar un helado de manzana. Apple fucking ice cream. You guys ever heard of that? By the way, the girl's totally possessed. Papi va a matarte. De papi va a venir a casa en el auto y boom. <laughs> Cute. Uh, it was a mosquito. Don't worry, I got it. If Patient Zero, at least in the area, was the pus bag man, who was it that cut in half and disemboweled the cleaner? <laughs> I like how she's possessed, but she's still a child. Okay, so it's like the pandemic. That's only in the cities. We're cool out here. Man, it's really great how they just drop you into the middle of the predicament. Hay siete reglas. Oh no, wait, wait. Exposition Grandma, she's gonna lay everything out for us. Here we go. Seven rules. Somebody- Hualdar, take this down. Nombrar a la maldad por su nombre. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah, Mr. Clean, Ronald McDonald, the Burger King, most definitely. Don't teach him how to survive. Where'd he get that? Oh no. Oh no, a call from Sabrina. Don't walk out into the middle of the road to answer the demon's phone call. <laughs> you know, the, the, the funny thing is, I can't, you could listen to this phone conversation and still not be sure that she was ever even possessed because that's the way she was talking before the demon showed up. <laughs> 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 
He's absolutely confused and disgusted by seeing his brother call himself a coward. Yeah, Zelda Rubenstein, here we go. When did they say they had a plan? You think she's gonna be like an old superstitious witch? You know, like back when they would consider, what's the vernacular they use today? Neurodivergence as like, uh, oh, well, they're possessed, clearly. Hey, man, you're into gilfs, that's fine. That's your business. You're still my bro. He looked like he was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Dusty jar. Cue bad thing to happen. <laughs> kind of looked like her face fell off and she was just kind of wearing it again. Dude, I think you're probably the last person that needs to go up there. Oh. Oh, she's got hops. Come on, you can't expect me to believe that she jumped and landed on her feet. She's got to have a hold of him with her teeth or something and just crawling along the forest floor. He's just on the spectrum, not the demonic spectrum. She is, she's accusing all autistic kids, maybe not all. But, like, why does she go out of her way to mention, oh, you know, I've seen this a lot in autistic kids. Odd superstition to put in your movie. Look at his hands and feet. He's clearly been vaccinated. She got a camera obscura in there. There have been other movies that do this, like, possession as epidemic kind of a plot. But this one feels, like, especially original. Just in the way they've broken up the narrative, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I believe that kid is fucked. That's pretty great. That's pretty fucking great. <laughs> Merry Christmas. He can't get possessed, but you're not supposed to kill them either, because if you do, I guess it's like an Evil Dead kind of a situation where, you know, evil just gets on its dirt bike and takes off down the, the forest path to freely infect whoever it wants. <laughs> and children like evil. That's a great line. It's true. Uh-oh. That guy makes the greatest faces. Is he gonna eat grandma? <laughs> Something feels different. He's in the bathroom. He's been making us hold it this whole time. They've been eating chalk? I agree, that's a gross concept. Eating chalk? I don't like touching it. I don't like the sound it makes on a blackboard. It was chalky like a demon. Look, lady, you're the only one that can do anything according to you. Yeah, you said that earlier about not running and saving his kid. And then he got turned into a personal bag of popcorn for his zombie mother. I kind of think maybe time is of the essence. <laughs> Just a little bit. We should take a nap first. The demon's setting him up. I keep saying demon, but they haven't used the word. I mean, they're treating it like it's a biological zombie outbreak, but they're like religious zombies. It's like if the T virus was Catholic. <laughs> Whoa, hey! <laughs> How come they weren't treating the boy like this? They all of a sudden decide she's the one who's lying? 
I believe the little girl because she was the one who was uh, fighting it and doing the pee pee dance at the same time. God, man. People get so intense in this movie. <laughs> Didn't she say to be nice? Even if she, he thought she was possessed, you're not supposed to hurt them. This guy's bad at following rules. <laughs> Just beating up a child. So you're telling me I gotta kill all of these kids with that hammer. So you're telling me I have to go back outside and hit that girl on her fingers with this hammer. Ron Perlman? They killed George Lucas. No, oh, this is one of those movies that does so many of the old tropes, you know, even right down to like one of the locations being a school. It, it, it twists them just enough and does them at a level so high that you can forgive it for being derivative of other things because it, it feels more like it's, uh, you know, borrowing from these earlier movies. Like, uh, what was the one I was just thinking about? Um, it's about uh, all the kids that are born during um, an eclipse or something, right? And they all got like hive mind stuff. It, it was evoking that a little bit. Actually, I don't really know why exactly, but it's kind of reminding me like City of the Living Dead by Lucio Fulci. You know, it's like, hey, what if a biblical prophecy happens in modern times? Oh, it's lime. Is that why your lips are all swollen? Have you been eating quick lime? Very school play level performance by the little girl there. I don't think they're buying it, guys. Maybe we should rush them before they get their observatory put together, whatever she's doing. I I don't think that guy's strong enough to hoist Puss Man out of there. Oh man. I wanted to see a scene of the kids gang beating her. Damn it. I'll take it. I think you can forget about the exorcism now. It's a little too late for that. Okay, so what do you think? You think Pedro's gonna kill the pus bag man? He has absolutely no reason to do it. He knows that he shouldn't do it. But somehow I feel like this dumb motherfucker's gonna do it. <laughs> what fun effects this movie has. <laughs> His little fat guy smile he's still got going on there. That was great. So does a big demon step out of him now? Oh, it's just too human-like. I wanted it to have, like, wings and horns and stuff. Is that too hokey? It's the Antichrist, right? But the way they talked about it was like it's... This is not a solitary incident. But the way they were talking about it, it was like it's 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 a thing that happens. But I don't know, just something about the way they're framing the the last part of the movie here. They're it's like a Damien thing, and you think about like how powerful something like that is. Like I can just like completely ruin an entire area. How pervasive? Like how many times is this situation supposed to have happened? I mean, you had to have guessed that it was going to end this way. I mean, <laughs> you know, like, how shocking people found the mist, the ending to the mist? I, d I don't think after having watched this movie, something like this is, uh, is all that shocking. They all kill themselves in the end? Well, you know, why, why wouldn't you? Okay, four bullets for me. Apple ice cream for you. God damn, it actually is apple ice cream. Son of a bitch. Oh yeah, he got the mark of the beast. That's not coming off. What did happen to her? Oh, we're gonna find out. Uh, yeah, um... Okay, it's gonna cut to her and she's gonna have an ice cream scoop stuck in her head or something because i wondered when pedro gets back to their house right and we see that jair Jair, what is his name is still there 
after having seen him last speaking com with complete perfect articulation and then we cut away we don't see what happens between him and the grandmother i'm glad they're like resolving all of this you know because i wondered if they were like just then like the explanation of the first uh, cleaner and how they ended up being ripped in half, right? Like, I still got, I got a ton of questions about the nature of like this possession thing and how much the outside world knows about it. But in terms of the small, intimate story that they're giving us right here, uh, they they're tying up all the loose ends. That's good. Yeah, he's gonna throw up Grandma's eyeball or a big chunk of her hair. Well, here's the problem, son. You got a grandma stuck in your throat. Oh, man, I thought it was going to be like a magician's scarf. And he's just going to be... Oh, maybe it is. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Boy, I hate to see a grizzled grown man cry. That was just one big wah. Why are you checking out the shingles? The brother is just like, oh, geez, this is really uncomfortable. Uh, all right, shoot yourselves in the head. Come on. You think they did incest? You, <laughs> you've not seen any of this movie so far. Have you? All right. Well, that was when? Yeah, when evil lurks. I mean, not bad. Not half bad. I liked uh, how brutal they were willing to get with it. Like, I, I know there's probably a lot lost in translation, and also there's probably some aspects of, like, folklore in Argentina that I'm not picking up on because I don't know anything about Argentinian folklore. But just, like, their whole way of approaching... This reminds me of, like, when I watched The Wailing, and actually this kind of feels similar in a lot of ways to The Wailing, too. Which, you have, if you haven't seen The Wailing, it's great. It's a... I, I don't even want to tell anybody about it. Just go watch it. It's a South Korean movie. Um, like, I felt, in the end, that they gave you enough information to follow along, more or less. Ordinarily, I would complain about having these moments where uh, the cleaner lady goes through, like... I mean, she literally uses the term rules, but she just lays it out, you know? You would think that, you know, they could have done it in a little bit more of a, of a subtle way than just blurting it out. But so much of this movie, like they drop you right into the middle of it and that's great. And then after they do that, it's like everything is so intense. I guess I can, I, I can excuse the exposition dump because it's like. We don't have time to fuck around. <laughs> we gotta get rid of the pus bag demon man before the blood covered white child is born to lead us all into hell or be the next Argentinian dictator or whatever the fuck's gonna happen. <laughs> Who knows? I also like that it was dystopian, but like just on the tip of dystopia. The characters were talking about how, you know, some bad shit went down. But apparently it's fairly recently. Uh, there's still some questions about, you know, how this is affecting the greater world at large. They keep talking about how fucked up the cities are. But you look at a, you know, little place like this. It's, it's another one of those movies, like I said, that it's following a lot of the, the standard tropes. But it does them in such a novel way. And it does them so well that it just makes it a fun entertaining movie to watch for me but you know i'm a demented person i can laugh i can laugh at the image of a mother eating her own son's brains but i do think as tragic and heavy as this movie is through most of it there were parts you gotta laugh at the part at the end where the the son gives him the side eye that's like I think that's probably my favorite thing in the movie, and that was just one little piece of acting. It, it just conveyed so much. This is the one part that messes with me. I w okay, I'll watch it again, but I'm thinking, especially considering the way a lot of the other special effects look, this might be practical effects assisted with CGI. I hope they didn't kill no goat.
I think the most surprising thing is just how brutal the movie was willing to be. Which again, I totally respect. That's great. I'm going to go to Dread Central right now real quick. L let's read this interview. Argentine director Demian Rugna knows how to scare audiences, and not just with jump scares, but with deep, bone-chilling tension that stays with you long after the movie has ended. Oh, he's the terrified guy. Yeah, another super tragic one. It was well done. I just remember not liking the story very much. I still got the video of that somewhere. I think I could probably do a video edit on that at some point. But I like this movie a lot better than Terrified. Again, still good. Like, you can tell it's quality. He makes quality. His latest film takes everything scarif scarified from Terrified and turns it up to 11. What was it like working with the animals? There's so much animal stuff in When Evil Lurks from goats and dogs, and they're doing such specific things, especially goats. What was it like working with the animals? How challenging was that? First of all, it's a question... Okay. First of all, it's questions like, how many goats do we need? What kind of dog do I want? What kind of dog is going to work with us? Because the dog breed that we used is a dog who is too hard to train. Yeah, I heard uh, it was like a, one of those bully types, right? Very stubborn. All the trainers said, no, no, no. This dog, no. It doesn't work. I cannot train this dog. But I wanted that dog. It was a good dog choice. It's his face. But he's lazy all the time. <laughs> Cute. And you need a dog who wants to play all the time. There was a big casting of dogs. Even the goat was horrible to work with them. We prepared the entire sequence, and we only had one day to shoot it. Only one day, all the gold sequence. Only one day, all the gold sequence. And it was horrible. I had 100, 150 goats, and that's great. They came with the trainer, we did a couple of shots, and the goats just went in the other direction. I said, what happened? And the trainer said, the goats are tired, they're suspicious of us. We have to wait a couple hours. I had only one day to shoot this. You cannot try and imagine how we did that scene. It was one of the worst days of my shooting career. Horrible. Well, don't work with the animals anymore. You don't have to. Leave the goats alone. But, okay. Oh, they go on. They're still talking about it. But I can tell just the way he's talking about with the goat trainer. I think that tells me that they didn't actually shoot a goat. That was just a pretty decent looking effect. Like I said, it looked better than the, uh, the axe chop. It was too hard to make this movie. Well, you did a good job, Demian. Come on. When we were shooting the scene, it was cloudy. We went to a field far away from the city for those goats. We shot until noon, and then the clouds disappeared. And I didn't have the crew for... Oh, no, it's like it's a cursed... It's a cursed movie set. Oh, no. What was the scariest movie you've ever seen? The Exorcist. Oh, yeah. Clear Exorcist uh, influence on... Both of this guy's movies. Man, I wish I had known beforehand that he was the terrified guy. That was a pretty good movie. I forget what I rated terrified. I'll have to see if I still got the video. But I will rate this one. I don't want to give it a five because I feel like... Okay, there was some comedy, obviously. I, I, I think ultimately the movie wanted to give off like a a hopeless Night of the Living Dead tragic kind of a vibe to it. And at least with me, and like I said, maybe it's just because I'm, I'm a jaded freak, but I didn't quite feel as bad as the movie wanted me to feel. At least that's the impression I'm getting. So I don't think I can give it a five. I'll give it like a four and a half, though. Like, it was a really enjoyable movie. Like, I would... I'm gonna recommend this to people for Halloween. I'm gonna...